Hi, and welcome to this presentation on IBC, the Inter-Blockchain Communication Protocol. If you're new to this channel, I simplify what teams are doing in crypto so you don't have to dig through all their blogs, read all their tweets, and go through all their white papers to save you time so you don't have to. If you like that, subscribe for more content. All right, so first let's go through the history of blockchain so you can understand why IBC is important. In generation one, there was Bitcoin and forks like Litecoin. All these coins used proof of work and these forks were suboptimal. They used the Bitcoin code base, which was primarily meant for payments. Then generation two came along and this included Ethereum and proof of work and dApps and smart contracts. Then we got generation three chains like Cosmos, Polkadot, and Near. These are highly programmable chains and they're scalable. So what's the problem? All of these blockchains are still separate. Bitcoin doesn't talk to Ethereum, Ethereum doesn't talk to Zcash, and so forth. And what about the Ethereum model? Well, Ethereum works great if you're a dApp building on Ethereum, but those dApps can't connect to other chains. Also, if you're a dApp, you're also subject to the larger Ethereum community overall, which means if you want a change to take place, you have to get it accepted by the broader developer community through a proposal versus having a highly sovereign blockchain using something like the Cosmos SDK. So enter IBC. IBC, or the Inter-Blockchain Communication Protocol, is trying to become a standard for inter-blockchain communication. It's a secure and reliable inter-module communication protocol, which is deterministic and runs on independent machines, including replicated state machines like blockchains or distributed ledgers. IBC can be used by any application which builds on top of it, some examples include cross-chain asset transfer, atomic swaps, multi-chain smart contracts, and data and code sharding of various kinds. IBC is being built right now by three independent teams, including the Inter Interchain Foundation, Tendermint, and Agoric. And for context, the Interchain Foundation is similar to the Ethereum Foundation for Cosmos. And what is IBC not, though? IBC is not an application layer protocol. It's also not an atomic swap protocol or a token transfer protocol or a sharding protocol or a layer two scaling protocol. <clears throat> IBC is also not just for token transfers and it's not just a Cosmos thing. IBC does more than token transfers as you'll see and IBC is not just built by Cosmos but by other teams and it plans to be an agnostic general purpose standard for interchain communication. The last point I'd like to highlight is that IBC does not require the Atom tokens to use it. Anyone can connect using IBC and they don't have to use a token. So how does IBC work? In this slide from Sunny's presentation, you can see ChainFu commits a message which also includes a packet message. For this example, send nine stake to Bob. This packet message gets sent to a relayer and is included in chain bar. Some of those IBC packet types include token transfers, non-fungible assets, and data. The quickest way to get started using IBC is with the Cosmos SDK. IBC is just a module that you can use right out of the box. For example, just like slashing, staking, governance, auth, and bank. Some of the frameworks committed to IBC support include the Cosmos SDK, IOV Weave, Nomic Lotion or Lotion.js, Agoric, and Cadenament. For Ethereum developers, you probably want to use IBC to connect to other blockchains, Peggy to create a peg of your ERC20 token, and Ethermint so you can port your Solidity code over to the Cosmos ecosystem. So what can you do with IBC? This is the biggest question. Some of the first examples include token transfers. So if you're, a, if you're on chain A and you want to transfer tokens to chain B, you can do that. And if you're a token holder of chain A, 
and you delegate your tokens to validators on chain A for staking rewards, you may be able to delegate your tokens to validators on chain B for staking rewards. And if you're voting on proposals on chain A, then you may be able to vote on proposals on chain B. Later, IBC can perform remote smart contract calls and move data between chains. And relevant to this is Game of Zones, which is incentivized test nets for Cosmos-based zones, which is basically blockchains on Cosmos. And this is similar to Game of Stakes, which was started later this year. And in this competition, developers can compete to win 100,000 atoms by building and running Cosmos zones. And what's exciting about this is that this is an adversarial environment that will actually test out IBC and all these independent blockchains together in a competition. And this will simulate what it will look like in the real world. Some teams that could use IBC are what I listed here. Now, it doesn't mean that they all will, but there's they're certainly some of the first contenders because they're already in the Cosmos ecosystem and use the Cosmos SDK or Tenement Core. So some of these examples include Binance DEX, Terra, which has a stable coin out of South Korea, Kava, which is like MakerDAO for Cosmos, True Story, which allows you to debate on arguments through a social networking platform, and Lino, which is a content sharing platform that has a dApp called DLive with live streamers like PewDiePie. Perhaps later in phase one or phase two, Ethereum 2.0 will have IBC support. Now, I want to emphasize that this is pure speculation, but it may be possible if both teams start reading each other's specs and move forward. And that means they need to read both these specs, the Ethereum 2.0 specs on GitHub and the interchain standards or the IBC specs also on GitHub. So what about Polkadot? A lot of people compare Cosmos and Polkadot, but surely they have some differences. Well, Polkadot is different because they will have bridges. <clears throat> In this example, you can see Polkadot has a bridge to Ethereum. And what Polkadot states here is that their commitment takes three distinct projects. The, they're going to have a Polkadot Ethereum public network bridge, a substrate parity Ethereum POA bridge, an Ethereum-compatible EVM smart contract execution module in Substrate. And these bridges are what they also describe on their wiki page. And in general, what Polkadot is trying to do is they're trying to create multiple bridges for intercommunication. They have bridge contracts, which are smart contracts deployed as bridges between Polkadot and external chains, cross-chain parachain communication, which no contracts are needed, and inbuilt bridging modules for bridging to Polkadot from an external chain via a purpose-built module. So Polkadot does have a name uh, in their tech stack called ICMP, which is similar to IBC in the naming convention, but it's quite different. You can see that ICMP is a subset of the Polkadot protocol. It defines the means by which messages can be passed with no additional trust between pair chains and or the relay chain, and relies heavily on Polkadot's relay chain infrastructure and is not relevant outside this context. And in particular, I ICMP is not a message or format standard. So you can see here that Polkadot is not trying to connect, to connect or create an interchain communication standard they're just trying to create a message passing technology for parachains in Polkadot's ecosystem with ICMP. But they're using bridges to bridge to Ethereum. So they'll have bridges bridging to different blockchains, but they're not trying to create their own standard, which is what IBC is trying to be. An example for IBC came up recently with DeFi Hackathon. There is a team called Everett, which won Hack Adam Soul, and they also came in first place for DeFi Hackathon. And what they did was they created staking derivatives. They created liquid staking positions, LSPs, NFTs, 
an additional staking token that has governance rights and receives rewards. These are tokenized leverage LSPs allowing delegators to choose different risk and rewards profiles. So for example, buying 3x leverage LSP tokens to receive 3x the rewards, while the money you lose when slash also increases 3x, which I thought was pretty interesting. So how will developers be successful? Well, not developers, but IBC. Well, I just threw in this classic Steve Ballmer thing, but basically they need adoption from developers. You know, it'll take time with Cosmos Zones, aka independent blockchains built using the Cosmos SDK and Tenement to connect to IBC. But at the end of the day, it's all about developers, developers, developers. And specifically, more application-specific blockchains need to be created, and more teams need to connect their chains with IBC. And this can be done by a game of zones, physical hackathons, virtual hackathons, and Ethereum devs using it later on. And this concludes my presentation on IBC and why it changes everything. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you felt like you got any value out of this video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more content. I'll see you next time.